What's up, duelists? Today, we're doing something a little bit different. Today, I'm going to be talking about the top 20 spell cards in Edison format, in my opinion, and 15 honorable mentions that I think are also really insanely strong cards, but maybe aren't as versatile as the top 20, even though some of the cards in the top 20 are not super versatile to begin with. I think their power level justifies them in, in a lot of different cases. Before we get into things, if you guys like this type of video, let me know in the comments below. If you want to see more of this, if you want to see me do trap cards or effect monsters or cyborg cards or whatever strategies, top 15 strategies or whatever. If you guys like this sort of like ranking sort of video, let me know in the comments below. And if you don't like it, also let me know in the comments below. In any case, let's hop right into things. So I have it all displayed. I know if I did it one at a time, people would just skim through the video anyway. So I have it all displayed here. I'm just going to go ahead and talk through all of the cards. So for the top 20, of course, Future Fusion, I think, is the single best spell card in all of Edison format. It is insane. It is pretty much so far and above every other spell card in the format. It's format warping. It's format defining. It defines two of the best decks in the format, the hero decks and the dragon decks. And it also sees play in zombie decks and quick draw decks to help increase their consistency and their power ceiling. This is, without a doubt, one of the most broken cards Konami's ever decided to print. It's a double Foolish Burial with Upside, which is insane, because as you can see, four slots down, we have Foolish Burial, which is like just a worse Future Fusion on a lot of different aspects. Obviously, Foolish Burial can send any monster, so it has some, some variance between itself and Future Fusion, but yeah, it is, it is still definitely worse than Future Fusion on a lot of fronts. While Future Fusion is still a build around, those build around restrictions are like, oh, I have to play three Red Eyes Darkness Metal in my deck? That card's already insane. It's just cards you already want to be playing anyway. Stratos, etc. are the better cards in the format to begin with. So it's definitely a very powerful card. Has to be number one. I don't think there's even another spell card in the format that comes even close to Future Fusion in terms of raw power level. Now, second and third, I had a lot of contention picking these because there are a lot of insane spell cards in the format. But because I fucking hate Mind Control and I really don't want to play against it ever, I have to put it second. Mind Control is one of the few cards that can interact with face down monsters, that can also interact with face up monsters. This card is absolutely disgusting. It just takes a monster, lets you do whatever you want with it besides tribute it. Brain Control is similar to Mind Control. You can play around it a little bit more by using cards like Book of Moon, which I have in the honorable mentions. But yeah, these cards are very busted. They basically say, oh, you made that thing? Now I made that thing. Completely flips the advantage in your favor if your opponent commits a little bit too hastily to the board. Now I don't like mind control. I think mind control is even more broken because mind control can interrupt opening set monsters, which is kind of like the the sort of like don't touch my set monster version of Edison format. As long as both players get to set their monsters, everybody's happy. I'll say that much. Everybody's happy. But if one player is getting mind controlled and if that player is me, I'm screaming at the screen. And that's why I have mind control second. Brain control, obviously insane. These cards steal so many different games. It's not even funny. Fourth, I had to put one for one. And the reason I had to put one for one is because Substitutes in the format. Not only that, but one for one pitch dandelion gets Cyber Valley is also an insane advantage to start with. Formats are often defined by their spell cards and what spell cards you can force into your deck. Oftentimes, Yu-Gi-Oh's most limited and banned cards are spell cards because spell cards by nature are more inherently powerful than monsters and traps. They give you really insane effects. They boost the consistency of your deck. They usually win you the game <laughs> on the spot when they resolve like future fusion they just have the most raw power to them even though they are one-time use unlike monsters at this point in the game at the 5d's point the 2010 point in the game the spell cards are by far the best cards in the game and so one for one giving you access to that ragigura or that substitute on the first turn of the game or that cyber valley it's just a ridiculous ridiculous advantage that you can't get just from like drawing those monsters naturally more or less this card is insane it enables a lot of unfair combos like fall troll hand loops like the substitute frog slicer stuff it also just enables turn one dupe blocks which are very uninteractive things to have to deal with um yeah busted card foolish burial similar basically tutor any monster the way the format kind of shapes up uh, you send it to the graveyard it gives you access to a lot of different abilities you can send a wolf you can send a malicious you can send a plague a mizuki the list goes on and on, all the good stuff you can send with this. You can send a Norlaris, blow up your opponent's field. You can send, you know, Wyverns, bring back your Red Med. This card's just nuts. It's just really nuts. Now, it's kind of like not as good in this format as it is in other formats, which makes me kind of want to put it lower on this list, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I kind of want to have it below Black Whirlwind because I think 
while it is really good and is really powerful to open in your hand, it's nowhere near as powerful as the next five cards I'm about to talk about. Reinforcement of the Army is this format's Pot of Greed. If you play a Go format, Reinforcement of the Army is kind of like a jank Pot of Greed. You search for Stratos, Stratos searches for your plus one, so you get your Pot of Greed immediately. Reinforcement of the Army historically has just been like an insane card. Lets you toolbox DD Warrior Lady, one of the best monsters in the format. Lets you toolbox Stratos to get any hero you want, which is insane. Just opens up whole lines of play for you. Uh, it's just one of the best consistency booster cards. Helps you dodge trap dust shoot, which is amazing. Helps you just like react to situations more versatile ways than you could if you had, let's say, any one monster in your hand. This card is fantastic on, on levels that I, I can't even begin to describe. It's definitely up here with the most powerful cards, especially in tandem with cards like one for one. It's it's very, very strong. Allure of Darkness, same thing. Rota with Allures is usually pretty busted. Allure of Darkness is kind of like this format's Graceful Charity. If you play Go format, Allure of Darkness is a lot like Graceful Charity. Draw two cards, banish the dark from your hand. While it's not as good, obviously, as Graceful Charity by any means, it is still very, very strong to be able to see the first eight cards in your deck as opposed to see the first six. You're two cards deeper towards your power spells, your other power spells like Future Fusion, for example, Rota, for example. You're two cards deeper towards your power traps like Trap Dust, You Solemn Judgment. And you're two cards deeper towards your Black Whirlwind, which is the next card I want to talk about. Black Whirlwind's the first sort of like quote unquote themed card. While Future Fusion is, you know, a build around, Black Whirlwind is much more archetypal on this list, but Black Whirlwind is just so insanely powerful. If you open up with this card in your hand, you're just an automatic favorite to take the game. It's just such a powerful card. If you resolve two normal summons, it turns into a plus one. If you resolve three and you haven't won the game, you've messed up somewhere. I honestly don't know what to say. This card is just fantastic. It lets you have a constant stream of advantage through the game. It lets you pressure your opponent relentlessly, throw your cards into their back row. It doesn't matter. You're going to constantly get pluses out of this card. It is such a powerful card inherently over the course of a grindy game, which Edison tends to lend toward. That's like kind of what the, the gameplay in Edison is like. So Black Whirlwind's very, very powerful. Honestly, probably should be above Heavy Storm and Giant Trunade. Heavy Storm and Giant Trunade, while they are powerful cards, they are inherently fair cards. You can't really win the game by activating Heavy Storm and Giant Trunade the same way you can activating Future Fusion or One for One or Rota. But they do, you know, represent these powerhouse spells that kind of define the format. Cards like Starlight Road get played because of Heavy Storm. It is format defining. It is format warping. It changes the way everybody plays, chooses to play around certain things. It makes it so you can't just set your whole hand, commit to the field. It makes it so you have to think about your resources in a lot of different ways. Giant Trinade less so than Heavy Storm, but these two cards, they're format defining. They're very powerful for a reason. Giant Trinade sees a lot less play because the card disadvantage, like I said earlier, Edison lends itself to grindier games. Even the aggro mirrors can be pretty grindy. A minus one could be the difference between winning or losing. That being said, sticking your play could be the difference between winning and losing, and so Giant Trunade is, is definitely up there with one of the more powerful spells in the format. Foolish Burial, we already talked about that. Burial from a different dimension. Now, this is something that we haven't really talked about, but prior to Burial, prior to Return, prior to Dimension Fusion, that kind of thing, cards that were exiled or banished or removed from play or whatever the fuck it's called in this game, uh, they were gone. They were just gone for good. You couldn't do anything with them. Uh, it's just they were they were gone. You can't mess with them. Burial lets you reuse your power cards from the graveyard. Your Mizuki, your Plague, your Vayu. Those are the big three. Necrogardena sometimes comes up too. Treeborn Frog in some instances. This card has lent to so many OTKs from the Vayu Turbo deck and the Blackwing decks that I, I can't even add them up. I can't even add them up. This is, again, kind of a themed card uh, alongside Black Whirlwind where it's mostly used in Blackwing decks. It's also used in Zombie decks, which are the two most popular decks in the format for a reason because they get to play a large number of these busted ash spell cards, including Burial from a Different Dimension. This card is just weirdly strong. It's weirdly strong. It's not a card you would read and initially be like, oh yeah, that's busted. That's really, really good. But when you draw it in your hand and you're just like, oh, I can do my broken thing twice now instead of once, then you start to realize this card just gives you that extra juice, that extra gas to go for that OTK that you normally wouldn't be able to push for. Very, very powerful card. Oftentimes it's a plus one outright. Sometimes it just ends the game. Uh, so very, very strong. The next card I have on the list is Emergency Teleport. This card had been limited, I think, prior to Edison format. I think it was limited in a couple formats before, but this card is insane. 
Just being able to special summon any level three or lower psychic from your hand or deck, obviously it's always gonna be Krevins, let's be real. You're never special summoning Mind Master or Psychic Commander unless you're you're tweaking, but yeah, if you're special summoning a Krevins from your deck, that's just busted. It's basically one for one, but just for Krevins, and that's still good enough. That's how insane one for one is. That's how insane Emergency Teleport is. This card is phenomenal. It is just, it's hard to understate how good this card is. It's still played in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. That's how good this card is. Obviously in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, it's a combo enabler, but in this format, it's a combo enabler as well. Special summoning a Krebins from your deck lets you threaten a Synchro Monster in one turn, which is something that is kind of unheard of. It also lets you threaten cards like Caius in one turn, also kind of unheard of. It's very versatile in the way it gets used. It powers up one of the cards in the Honorable Mention, Telekinetic Power Will. It's just a really strong card. You can honestly throw an Emergency Teleport and a couple Krebins into just about any deck, and it's never going to be that bad. It'll, it'll always be at least functional to some degree. Next card on the list... Themed cards, Charge of Light Brigade, Solar Recharge, these cards are busted. That being said, you do have to play Light Swarms to play them, which it is a drawback and a blessing at the same time because the Light Swarm monsters are all very good. All the Light Swarm monsters are power crept when compared to your average effect monster. They're all stronger for some fucking reason because uh, they wanted to sell booster packs, I suppose. And then they get their own Rota, Charge of Light Brigade, which has upside, milling the top three cards of your deck. And they get their own Draw Spell, Destiny Draw, which has upside, milling two cards from your deck. Normally, you'd be like, oh, milling is bad. I'm sacrificing resources in my deck. And sometimes you'd be right. Sometimes you'd be right. But most of the time, milling cards from your deck to your graveyard, you've built your deck to get advantages that way. Some of the best decks in the format, Fayu Turbo, Dandelion, Light Sworn, Christia Sworn, all those decks that can take advantage of milling cards, uh, they just have these powerful effects that can oftentimes turn this tutor into a plus one outright or this draw spell into a plus one outright. So... Oftentimes, these cards are, are much more powerful than they initially appear. Next card on the list is Cold Wave. This is a card that has seen far less play as the format has developed than I initially would have thought. I think this card is nuts, but you do have to sort of understand that when you play it, you're going to get hit back really fucking hard. You're going to get punched in the face when you play Cold Wave because whatever effect monsters your opponent's been stockpiling... They're going to be able to slam it through your back row, which is no longer active because you shut it off with your own cold wave. So this is very much a double-edged sword in a way that I think a lot of people are kind of turned off by. That being said, it is one of the few cards that prevents your opponent from playing their spell cards to come back in the game. Again, spell cards, there's not that many really good spell cards in Edison format. Edison format is really defined by the traps and the monsters because there are so many good traps and monster effects and all of the good spell cards have been like either limited or nerfed or whatever like the fact that the top 20 list has fucking gold sarcophagus on it should should be saying something but uh yeah cold wave it, it's one of those cards that i think probably should see more play it is a shutout card is a blowout card but i don't know maybe we'll see it popping up in some decks in the near future pot of avarice very powerful spell card basically infinite resources shuffle back your cards draw two cards it enables a lot of combos, frogs, dragons, and then it also enables decks like Quick Draw Dandy Warrior to just have an insane grind game. You can basically play whatever the hell you want in your opponent's back row. As long as your stuff's hitting the grave, you can shuffle it back, draw more cards, and keep going. This is one of the most annoying cards to have resolved against you if you're playing a longer, more drawn-out game because it feels like everything you've done up until that point was just pointless it feels like all of that effort you put into like accumulating advantage or like destroying your opponent's threats felt like it didn't really matter <laughs> it feels like your opponent gets rewarded for just playing like like slamming stuff into your mirror force or whatnot but it's still a very busted card and i have to put respect on it the only downside to pot of avarice that some of these other cards that are higher than it on the list don't have is that pot of avarice can brick this is where we're starting to get into the like this card can brick territory. Everything below or above Pot of Avarice rarely is bricking. Rarely is bricking. They're all very powerful cards. Yes, you can brick on Giant Trunade, but as long as you draw your combo, Giant Trunade is really good. Whereas Pot of Avarice, you draw multiple of these, you're kind of not super happy about it. Super Rejuvenation, another card that can kind of brick, but it is so insanely powerful. Yes, it only goes in one deck, it goes in Dragon Turbo, but it is so busted in that one deck that I had to include it on the top 20. I know if I didn't include Super Rejuvenation, someone in the comments would be like, how are you not including Super Rejuvenation? And I'd have to agree with them. Even though Super Rejuvenation may go in less decks than like, I don't know, Miracle Fusion, for example, or Book of Life, 
Super Rejuvenation is just that much better. It's literally just draw six a lot of the time, draw even more a lot of the time, and then if you draw into another one, you can immediately play it and draw another six. There really is no other effect like Super Rejuvenation in the entire format when it resolves for that much. So it's just one of the most busted cards, and the fact that you can play three of them too uh, has enabled a lot of busted strategies. Dimensional Fissure and Level Limit Area B are the only two floodgates I have on this list. These are cards that I think... Um, obviously do a great job of preventing your opponent from playing the game. Dimensional Fissure, usually played in Glads. We've seen it pop up in a few other strategies recently. Lately, I've been trying it in Gear Town strategies. I actually think it's pretty good there because it puts them in an awkward spot where they're like, do I Ryko the Gear Dragon or do I Ryko the Defissure? And they have to choose. And Defissure can shut off entire decks. It can be really good against fairies, it can be really good against zombies, it can be really good against uh, Dandelion decks or Lightsworn decks. It's just really good against a lot of those like graveyard-centric matchups. Like I said, those decks that are trying to take advantage of the powerful milling effects that are in the format. Even against frogs, it can be pretty pretty much of a hoser. Uh, they can only use a tree more frog once under defissure. So yeah, it's it's pretty strong. It's pretty strong. It's not the best against frogs, uh, in my opinion, but it's good enough in that it's usually going to trade for the tree more frog usage, which is pretty strong. And it can attract a monarch. It can be a manic, uh, magnet for a monarch. So it's, it's pretty strong in those matchups too. The only issue with Defissure is it's like kind of hard to find the right deck to fit it in, and it can brick in multiples, similar to Pot of Avarice. That being said, Defissure is really good early on like Pot of Avarice, so I don't know. It's one of the most powerful spell cards in the format easily. It's been limited before. It's been I don't know if it's been banned before, but it's definitely been limited before. Level limit area B, limited spell card in the format, a disgusting spell card. Uh, only a few decks can effectively play this, like Burn decks, X Sabers. Uh, Six Samurai can play this card pretty effectively. That's a non-deck, let's be real, but it can. Frogs could potentially play level limit area B. There are a couple other decks that can play level limit area B pretty effectively, but uh, I think the only thing holding it back is where you can place it. The decks that play this card, even though this card is so fucking insane and can single-handedly win the game against like powerhouse decks like Zombies and Black Wings, it's just not quite good enough. Uh, because it's not played in those good decks. You have to be playing kind of a subpar deck to play this card to begin with. So that's what's really holding it back from it being higher up on this list. Let's say it was played in Black Wings, for example, or Zombies, or even Frogs. Even if Frogs like consistently played level limit area B, I think it would be well above probably Cold Wave at least, if not above Recharge and Charge. Probably above Recharge, probably not above Charge, I think. It would definitely rise up on my list for sure. And then the last in the top 20 is Gold Sark. Of course, Gold Sark, people use this to search for the other busted spell cards or for Dark Arm, JD, Christia, whatever powerful late game card they need to uh, close things out. This card is just disgusting. Just lets you tutor whatever. All you have to do is survive. That's a busted effect. Need I say more? Let's get into the honorable mentions because there's some cool stuff down here. Megamorph. This is a card that's heavily slept on. If it wasn't limited to one, it would enable a bunch of degenerate shit i'm not gonna lie because you could consistently see it if it was at three and you could go for stuff like demise otks or like uh evil hero dark gaia otks or jinzo otks a lot more consistently machine otks become a lot easier when you have megamorph i do also want to uh honorable mention limiter removal i feel like limiter removal is another card that goes up here i did want to fit limiter removal into the top 20 but it kind of conflicted with where i wanted to put level limit area b and defissure and i feel like if you include defissure you have to include level limit area b so it made my list awkward all right it made it not 20 cards so limited removal definitely honorable mention alongside megamorph let me pull that spell up for you guys so you know what it does limited removal is this card it doubles all the machine monsters i think megamorph and limited removal are insane cards very busted upstart goblin this is a card that can boost the consistency in some decks at the cost of some life points We've seen it have middling success, marginal success here and there. Uh, it can be okay. It can be okay. I don't think it's as good as uh, it is in later formats where if you draw into your nut combo, you auto win. There are very few auto win nut combos in Edison format. And the ones that you can draw into are oftentimes nerfed by giving your opponent the excess life points. So tentative, tentative powerful card. Book of Life, obviously insane. Straight up Monster Reborn plus DD Crow. The value gained from this card is excellent. The only issue with this card is similar to Pot of Avarice. It can brick and it's pretty narrow. It only goes in one deck, obviously. So yeah, Terraforming, Busted Spell card. Tutor any field spell. There are a lot of great field spells to tutor for in Edison. 
The three fusion spells, Dark Calling, Miracle Fusion, Overload Fusion, I think these cards are all fantastic. Dragon's Mirror, to some extent, is okay as well. You can build a Lights from a Dragon deck, maybe force it there, but I think these three are the three worth talking about. Dark Calling, Miracle Fusion, very busted. Miracle Fusion is seen a ton of success. Cannot, cannot understate the power of this card. The only thing is, is they're pretty limiting in the decks that you can play them in. They really only go in one deck. Uh, Miracle Fusion is probably a better card in terms of like actual results than Level Limit and Defissure. But in terms of like how impactful the cards are and how versatile the cards are, I think Defissure and Level Limit, they kind of edge out Miracle Fusion for me personally. Raw Power Level, Level Limit Area B is just a stronger card than Miracle Fusion. So yeah, Gateway of the Six, again, insane spell card. Card that should never be legal in any format ever. This is just a ridiculous version of Black Whirlwind. It's just an infinitely better version of Black Whirlwind. But again, the monsters that you trigger this with fucking suck in the format. Card Destruction, this is a card that I really wanted to put on the top 20 list. Didn't quite make the cut for me. There just really isn't a great Card Destruction deck that isn't insanely upset by setting up the opponent's graveyard by using Card Destruction. I feel like that's the issue with Card Destruction, is that everyone's playing these powerful graveyard strategies, and when you activate Card Destruction in Edison format, your opponent's getting a free Card Destruction, which oftentimes is better for them than it is for you. Now, alongside Super Rejuvenation, it's obviously insane and enables a lot of degenerate stuff, but I elected to include Super Rejuvenation because the broken card in that instance is actually Super Rejuvenation, not Card Destruction. Because if you were just activating Card Destruction and not activating Super Rejuvenation, that's not as good, and you're oftentimes setting up your opponent quite a bit. Rekindling and Power Well are two insane Soul Charge type effects. These cards are insanely busted, uh, really, really nuts cards in Edison format. Rekindling enables an entire deck on its own. The Flamville deck is pretty mid, but then when you draw Rekindling, you're just like, oh, that's why I play this deck. It's pretty insane. Power Well, obviously, you've seen it in the Welly Dad decks. It is very strong. It enables big synchro combos. Same thing as Rekindling. Uh, both very powerful cards. Both very, very busted cards. I couldn't have a top 20 list without at least mentioning these two cards because They've done a lot of work in a lot of tournaments, and they've they've put up a lot of results. Uh, telekinetic Power Well, not so much. I feel like people are kind of sleeping on that deck a little bit. It has a couple tops, but uh, Rekindling. I, also, Flanvel, people kind of sleeping on Flanvel a little bit too. I feel like Flanvel is, is a stronger deck than people give it credit for. I memed on it a lot. I don't think it's like an insanely good deck, but I think it beats up on some of the more popular choices nowadays. I think it beats up on Christia Sworn, and I think it beats up on Vayu Turbo, which are two very popular decks. Uh, and Flanville does just does a great job at like terrorizing those decks. So uh, definitely something to think about moving forward. Not really related to the spell card, but you know, just just a little piece of advice from a uh, father here. Uh, fucking enemy controller, Mark of the Rose, brain control, mind control, 2.0. Uh, these cards are busted. Soul Exchange 2, to a degree. Instant Fusion. We've really only seen it have success in one deck so far, but there's potential. There's potential. You could bring out Mariner. You could set up for Miracle Fusions. You could bring out Reaper. You could set up for Book of Life. You could bring out a bunch of different cool stuff with Instant Fusion. I think this card has the potential to be nuts. We just haven't seen it outside of Dragon Turbo. So that's the issue. It's just like we haven't seen someone fully capitalize off of the power of this card. It's definitely a good card. It's definitely a strong card. We just haven't seen it really actualize itself yet. And then Book of Moon, of course... Cannot talk about Edison format without talking about Book of Moon. It is the most versatile spell card in terms of like interactive play, in terms of like fun stuff, but inherently it is just too fair compared to the rest of the stuff in the top 20 list, and that's why it didn't really make the cut. It's just not as unfair as those cards. It is a very powerful card. It is probably the best minus one in the game. A lot of people say that. Uh, it, it, that's actually copium. It's definitely not the best minus one in the game I can think of several that are up here but uh yeah book of moon is is very strong so this is my top 20 list if you guys have a different list different card on your mind let me know in the comments below if you order this a little bit differently let me know in the comments below i'm interested to hear your takes because i think what i think is powerful is is a little bit different obviously i'm factoring in a lot of context i'm factoring in a lot of like just like generic opinions on the game, but everybody thinks about this differently. I know some people might be putting Cold Wave way higher, or some people might be putting Mind Control way lower. I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's correct. Maybe it's not. It's really hard to measure the power of a card outside of 
using just direct results. And I think that that's a little bit disingenuous. In any case, I'll see you guys in the next vid. Let me know if you guys like this type of thing. Uh, smash like, subscribe. Peace out.